we can do. It'll be fine, sir. I'll leave you now to communicate with your ship. And I'll be back shortly to uh, show you the real miracle of Goliath. Thank you. For your protection, gentlemen. Understood. How much ammo would you bring, Sweeney? Not enough to hold off those bow weirdos. Or anybody else, for that matter. What exactly are your speculations, Sweeney? I don't know. Those guards, for instance. There's an awful lot of them, and they stick to us like glue. They're for our protection. <laughs> sure. But the question is, from what? This was the auxiliary engine room, designed to provide power for lights, air conditioning, blowers, etc. Fortunately, it's located in the forward part of the ship and was within the air bubble that formed when Goliath went down. Open up, would you please? Obviously, we do not allow fire of any kind on board, except for the light room and the cooking area, which is specially vented. Otherwise, as you know, the carbon monoxide would kill everybody. Now, this is the single most important space on the entire ship. This is the very heart of Goliath, which guarantees our very survival from one moment to the next. Your turbine, sir. What runs it? Ah, over here. The designer of Goliath saw fit, in his wisdom, to provide the auxiliary engine room with its own scotch boilers, thereby ensuring us some measure of hope. When the torpedo struck, I was aft in the main engine room with Dan Wesker. Somehow, we made our way forward to the temporary safety of the air pocket. The people had panicked, were trying to reach the top deck, unaware that it was now completely underwater. Out of a total of almost 1,900 passengers and crew, only 240 managed to survive. The captain and most of the ship's officers were gone, and the rest of us were faced with certain death as our oxygen supply ran out. But then I remembered the auxiliary engine room forward. If anything was to be done, it would have to be there. We made our way down to G deck. The lights were on, which indicated that the generators were still operating. But the key was the scotch boilers. They had to be kept fueled. And although Goliath had almost a million barrels of oil in her bunkers when she went down, we had to determine how much was left and whether the pipes that carried it were still intact. The original venting system had been destroyed, so it was necessary to put on gas masks to protect us against carbon monoxide until we could find a way later to vent it overboard. Luckily, most of the bunkers were still undamaged, as were the conduit pipes, and those that weren't, we later repaired. By my calculation, we had less than 48 hours to replenish our oxygen supply. Water being composed of two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen, the problem was solved, for the time being, by electrolysis, which separates the two. But by doing so, we were also releasing hydrogen, which was extremely volatile and could blow the ship apart. It became necessary to vent it outwards through the hull. By now, the pressure inside Goliath had equalized with the pressure outside so the water was held back. After many hours, the job was finished, which meant we had some air to breathe. We had a shipment of barrel lime aboard, which we spread around to soak up the carbon dioxide we were breathing out, and until we could later construct a more permanent air scrubbing system. There was plenty of food and water aboard, and the forage staterooms were intact. Now that the crucial problems had been temporarily solved, the people settled down to wait. And now, if you'll forgive me, I've got a great many things to do. Mr. Cabot, Mr. Zillowkirk, 
Dr. Marlow, I presume. Excuse me, sir, but aren't you... Ronald Bentley, at your service. Head of the welcoming committee. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome our visitors from the ship, British Enterprise 4. Would you come and sit up here with me in the council, please? And Dr. Marlow, with Dr. Goldman, I think. And Mr. Cabot, I'm sure you won't object sitting next to my daughter. Oh, sir. We are most passionately interested in learning about the world about Commander. Of that. Perhaps you will enlighten us. Hello. This is Mr. Cabot. Senator and Mrs. Bartholomew. Welcome. Thank you. Sally and Luke Crane and their little girl Beth. And this is my friend Maria. Hi, Maria. Hello. Did I hear him say you're from an English ship? Yes, sir. Enterprise Four. Oh. oh, remarkable. In these waters. Or is it over? It's what over. War? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is. And Hitler? Was defeated, sir. I told you he'd lose, but you never listened to me. Yeah. Well, at any rate, that calls for a toast. To peace. And to the good old United States of America. Oliver, I'm afraid he's had too much of this seaweed champagne. <laughs> oh, not at all. Those are octopus eyes. Is something the matter? No. <clears throat> no. No, I, I'm, uh, I guess just not much in octopus eyes tonight. That's all. Oh, well, I'll get you something else. Uh, no, I... So you see, I'm the doctor on board. That you are. Did you and I have a lot to talk about, Dr. Goldman? Yes. Dr. Marlow, there's something I really want to know. My father was trying to escape from Nazi Germany when he came on board Goliath. He died when I was 28, but all his life he wanted to know what happened. Your father got out just in time. Was Hitler really murdering them? The bastard killed six million men, women, and and children. He gassed them in concentration camps. Six million? There is a state of Israel now, and uh, Jews from all over the world live there in uh, relative peace. Peace? I wonder if it really exists. Even here. Look, I run a clinic on board with what my father taught me. You must come tomorrow. Well, that's something I really want to see. I will. Good. Are you saying, Commander, that another great war is about to commence? The world is uncertain, Mr. Bailey. And there have been several wars since Hitler was defeated. And uh, this bomb you talk about, certainly the nations have forbidden its manufacture. They have not, sir. What? A monstrous weapon that could destroy all mankind? But that is utter madness, Commander. Commander, our world is certainly far from perfect down here, I admit. But uh, I cannot conceive of yours and my wildest imaginings. Uh, you got wars, you got sickness, you got... I suppose they, they still hang a bloke if he gets drunk on a Saturday night and does in his old lady. 
Well, I hope I haven't painted the picture as pessimistically as that, Mr. Wesker. In fact, gentlemen, we've succeeded in putting the man on the moon. The moon? Yes, sir. Now, really, that is most incredible. The moon. Down here, down here, this is the real miracle. And Mr. McKenzie, he's done it all. You mustn't uh, believe everything that Wesker says, Commander. He's inclined to be a little prejudiced. The truth is that we can all be geniuses when survival is at stake. What is that? Probably the current. men shoot first. A hydroponic garden. Up there is where the majority of our food is grown, without soil. Only desalinated brackish seawater is used, but the nutrients in it allow the plants to grow. Father visited such an experimental farm before he sailed from England, and he applied what he learned here. And I suppose this was all begun by uh, taking sprouts from the original stores? Yes. This was the ship's pool. Yes, we use it as a fish hatchery now. We've developed many of our own strains. The people you see are called agri-people. They're trained as children and work here all their lives. Does that mean they can never change? Not unless they're elected to the life room. The most important of all are the life people. It's their responsibility to tend the boilers and operate the turbines and generators. It's a great honor to be a life person. You have to be a member before you can be elected to the Supreme Council. Mm -hmm. Ah. Thanks. It's good. You learned everything from your father. Yes. He was a brilliant man. Seems that Goliath has more than its share of brilliant men. You are thinking about Mr. Mackenzie. From whom all blessings flow. <laughs> you know, I have a great curiosity about your world. I can't imagine what it's like at all in spite of everything we've been taught about it. Well, it might disappoint you, but I hope not. Do you have much illness there? Yes. There are many enemies we haven't conquered yet. There's cancer, the common cold. Oh, we don't have anything like that here. No illness at all? Oh, minor complaints, of course. But our isolation has protected us. In the beginning, many died. But now we have a strong population with natural resistance. 
Which reminds me the reason I'm here, aside from your charming company, of course. Mm -hmm. We brought along some serum to inoculate the people against any viruses that we might introduce ourselves. Uh, does Mr. Mackenzie know about this? Surely you don't think we'd do anything without his permission? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Are you married, Dr. Goldman? No. No, I'm, I'm dedicated to my work. And Mr. Mackenzie thought I would be more valuable doing this. Are you? Yes. <laughs> oh. Children? Three. Oh. We had to have permission to be married, of course. And to have a child. It's a great privilege. We were very lucky. Who decides who's lucky? The Supreme Council. Mr. Mackenzie. We must go and let you get on with your work. Oh, but I haven't told you about the pool yet. This was originally the first cargo hold. It was badly damaged. The salvage people managed to pump it out. Salvage people? A work group, too. They reclaim sections of the ship for the people's use. My friend, Maria, you met her? Sure. She works with them. We found clothing and clocks. Sometimes even jewelry. Of course, we all fight over that. <laughs> do the fish always come this far inside the ship? Sometimes they do. Then we really do celebrate. <laughs> This thing's been good to us, Peter. We even make our own medicine from algae. Father says there are some things we know down here that you don't know up above. I'll bet on that. What is this? Let me see. Oh, yes. Well, there is one scourge on board, Goliath. Palmer's disease. Palmer's disease? Algae-based bacteria. Named after Mr. Palmer, the first victim. Have you a cure for this disease? No, but fortunately the end comes quickly. Fever, coma, and then death. So, when would you like me to arrange for the inoculations? Well, uh, the sooner the better. We can do it together. Fine. <laughs> Boys or girls? Pardon me? Your children. Oh, uh... Two boys and a girl. There's Maria. We mustn't stop her working. Maria, move along there. some way, just temporarily. I can walk tomorrow, Mr. McKenzie. I promise. Of course you will. We'll have you up and about on your feet in no time at all. I can work in the aqua pools. I don't have to stand there. We'll find some place, don't you worry. As a matter of fact, Leah is going to look after you herself. Now, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Yes. Now, the next time I see you, I want to see a big, Big smile, no more tears. All right? Yeah! Yeah! I was sore for a week after that one. No matter how many times they've seen it, they're always surprised at the end when I kill the dastardly count. I take it your film is the only one they had on board, sir. The only one that survived. A captive audience, you might say, for 40 years. 
and never a gray hair. <laughs> belong to my wife, and I want you to have it. Oh. Thank you, Mr. McKenzie. Can I have the box, too? <laughs> <laughs> of course. The paper box is much more valuable than a necklace, isn't it? And I just happen to have in my pockets oh. one or two other little... How do you know they were for you? For <laughs> you? For you? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, you all have for everybody that you know. Kansas. Yes, my scarf. Excuse me, sir, but... Uh, could I have a word with you in private, sir? Of course, of course. Excuse me, us children. I get the feeling no one likes Mr. Wesker very much. But you can see how devoted he is to father. Someone has to do the hard things to make a society work. Mm. And you believe that? Yes, of course. Leah. Leah, I'm afraid I have some rather bad news. Maria has taken the turn for the worse. Oh, no. I have to go to her right... Maria is dead. Dead? It was Palmer's disease. Again, absolutely nothing we could do. Night. My Sally told me I'd probably find you here. Not too sure I understand any of this. But it's never easy losing someone you love. What's important is what you remember about Maria. Your memories, that's what matters. That's her legacy to you. Because life goes on. You want me to leave? When they die on board Goliath, they're placed in the furnace in the life room.
I simply took a turn for the worst and died. There was nothing I could do about it. It was Palmer's disease. But then it wasn't complications from a fall. Not directly, no. Although we have discovered that the disease tends to attack people who are already weakened by sickness or injury. But not always. No. The last case was a, a year ago. The patient was mentally distressed, suffered a nervous breakdown. Does it ever affect children? Oh, really? Only three times that I can remember. E each time it was a godsend. Well, one of them was born with a rheumatic heart, and two of them were deformed. And what about the elderly? Uh, yes, they do seem especially susceptible. Dr. Goldman, I was wondering if I could assist you in your autopsy. Oh, we, we don't do autopsies. You don't? It's forbidden. There's no refrigeration aboard Goliath. Oh, yes. Well, uh, then perhaps I could examine the body. It's already being cremated. Without any services? A brief one. Conducted by Mr. Mackenzie. Oh, so he takes care of your spiritual needs as well? Yes, you could put it like that. Well, it's not going to cure Palmer's disease, but I suppose one can always hope, can't one? Has Leo shown you our heat exchange system yet? No, sir. No, no, she hasn't. We intend to tap the energy source of the volcano that lies immediately underneath us. Once we've done that, all Goliath's energy problems will be completely solved. Imagine what that means, Mr. Cabot, to be able to tap such resources. We will be a completely self-contained world. Sir, what was it you wanted to see me about? I understand that Leah did not return to her quarters last night, and I was told that she was with you. Well, she was quite upset about the death of her friend Maria. Yes, of course, of course. Mr. Cabot, Leah is very innocent in many ways. You know what I mean? Many years ago, when she was much younger, she was very close to Riker, but nothing more, you understand. I always hoped that she would find somebody one day. Well, I'm sure she will one day, sir. I hope so. I certainly hope so. Sir, the Bow people, uh, characters like Riker, I'm not so sure I understand much about them. Every society has its rebels, Mr. Cabot, those who want something for nothing. They didn't fit. Of course, I can understand your concern. After all, we both come from nations where democracy is highly valued. With circumstances, I suppose that's necessary. It is, Mr. Cabot. It is. Now, you were elected, Mr. McKenzie. Yes, by vote. Somebody had to take charge, and I suppose they thought that I was the logical choice at the time. Yes, sir. Tell me, do you ever regret? Uh, regret's not the right word. Uh, anyway, uh, 40 years that you've lost. Sir. Lost? <laughs> we haven't lost anything, Mr. Cabot. On the contrary, we have gained the richest and most rewarding experience imaginable. Which makes the prospect of leaving almost unbearable. Surely, sir, the people here will want to be rescued. Yes. Yes, of course they will. And yet, you know, I can't help feeling that if a spaceship was to land upon Earth from another planet, and the aliens said to the people, we have come to rescue you, the answer might be, rescue us. From what? Father asked me to show you his heat exchange machine because I love to come here. The water's so warm. Father says it's heated by the volcanic plume from beneath the hull. You know where I come from? That's called the hot tub. Hot tub? Hot tub. That's a funny name for a pool. Yeah, well, funny or not, that's what they're called. Only people get all the way in. Oh, it would be too dangerous in this pool. Father says that the currents are very strong and they pull you right down. Father says, huh? <laughs> you ever have an opinion of your own, Leah? Sometimes. Well, does Father also say that his heat exchange machine will never work? You know, with all their technology on the surface, our scientists still haven't figured out how to make one work. They abandoned your father's approach a long time ago. 
Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, it's not his fault, though. He's already performed miracles. This whole ship is proof of that. <laughs> 